So signaling is at the root of so much of what we do. Of course, we could apply it in marketing and consumer behavior as I do, but you could apply it to every domain where animals interact with one another. So here's a, a very fairly common question of evolutionary psychology. You look at the peacock, you look at the lion, you look at virtually every bird, uh, um, many fish. In all of these groups, it is the male that is the beautiful one, the one that's attracting the eye, the one that is standing out, peacocking, you know, as an expression. Why is it in human beings, in most cultures, it's that it's the inverse, that it's the woman, the female, who is the beautiful one who's trying to be attractive? Well, so no, it, it, both are doing it in the human context, but simply using different trajectories to do so, right? When, when uh, if you come downtown Montreal and on a summer hot evening, and you stand in a particular area and you watch the same 18 idiot males driving around with the car's uh, windows rolled down and the music blaring, I can tell you without looking at them that the next car coming is driven by a male. So it's not that women engage in, 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 you know, in visual-based peacocking in the human context, but men do, except that we, in the human context, we both do. But you point to actually something really important something that actually was also discovered by the evolutionary biologists that I mentioned earlier when we were talking about self-deception. And that's called parental investment theory. In incredibly, one of the most profound theories that you could ever uh, hear in your entire life. Because it actually argues that if you wanna know the patterns of sex differences in any species, okay, you simply look at the sex within that species that provides the greater minimal obligatory parental investment. The one that provides the greater parental investment is the one that will be smaller, less testosterone, more sexually choosy, less extravagant in their sexual signaling. So for most species, you're exactly right, Michael, it is the males that you know carry that burden because they have a lot less minimal parental obligatory investment. On the other hand, there are few species, they're called sex role reversal species, where every single pattern of sex difference is exactly reversed. So in those species where it is the males that provide greater parental investment, the females are bigger, the females are more colorful, the females build harems of males to mate with, they have higher testosterone. So imagine how powerful that theory is because with one great insight, you're able to explain the patterns of sex differences across 2 million sexually reproducing species. So this is why, the, by the way, why Michael, I despise the argument made by profound lobotomized imbeciles, including <laughs> many of my colleagues who argue, but bruh, evolutionary psychology, evolutionary theory is just a bunch of Post, post hoc storytelling. Right. Whereas the reality, the epistemological reality is, is that it, it's the exact opposite. Before we actually confirm that a theory is correct, not only do we demonstrate its universality across human cultures, we demonstrate its universality across 2 million species. I mean, there's almost no scientific uh, field that places the burden of evidence as high as evolutionary theory. And yet every moron on Twitter writes, but Dr. Saad, you're not really studying a real field. You're an evolutionary psychologist. It's all fake science, right? So that really upsets me because not only are you profoundly wrong, but you are arrogant in how wrong you are. 